Welcome to October's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is combination sum. Given an array of distinct integers and a target integer, return a list of all unique combinations where the chosen number sum chosen numbers sum to target. You may return the combinations in any order. The same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times. Two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen numbers is different. So two two three is the same as 2, 3, 2. That makes sense. I've solved this problem before, so let's see if I could rehash and try to solve it from memory. Let's just look at our example here with 2, 3, 6, 7. So say that we had candidates 2, 3, 6, 7, and we have a target of 7. Now, if we were to do this in the most straightforward fashion, we'd probably do something recursively, right? We would start from the very beginning and try to do like a depth first search, repeating as soon as we find that we are either the sum is equal to target or greater, we will either add it to some output or revert back and then I guess do some sort of backtracking where we'll start from the next path to go on to the next number. Now it's start like say it goes like two, two, two. Uh, and then it goes 2, that's above 7, so that doesn't work. So now at 2, 2, 2, we'll try 3, then we'll try 6, so on and so forth. But that's going to be exponential time complexity. And on top of that, we'll actually have to sort our candidates if we wanted to um, make sure that we don't get any duplicates. So there's a DP solution where we could build up our co um, candidate combinations by target numbers. So what I mean by that is, say that we had the target of 7, what we'll do is create a DP array and try to build up these subarrays to figure out what combinations we can make to get these numbers that precede 7. So say with a candidate 2, we could see that well, at 0, there's no combination. At 1, there's no combination. So the, while the candidate is greater than our target, we could just skip that. But once we hit the target number for the same number, we could add a com combination here, right? So there you go. But what about if it's less? Well, obviously we can't make two, like add two to make a three here, but we could add two to a one to make three. So why don't we check back to see, all right, well at one, do we have any combinations? Well, clearly we don't, so we can't do anything here either. What about a 4? Well, we can't do 4, but if we add it to 2, we could. So we just go back and say, all right, what are the cell arrays for 2? Well, we see 1. One of them is 2, so we'll just add that here. We'll say 2, 2. Now at 5, it'd be the same thing. Can't do anything at 3. And at 6, we would look back at 4. Oh, 2, 2. We can add 2 to 4, so hey, 2, 2, 2. What about 7? Nothing here. Now we move on to 3. And three, um, we'll be using the same line here and we'll say, nope, nope, nope. What about three? Yes, we can. So just say that we'll add to three here. What about four? Well, we can add three to one and get four, but there's nothing there. So uh, we'll just keep two, two. And five, oh, right here, we can see that um, we can add three to two. So hey, right here, two, we just add three to two. So great, two to three and so on and so forth. And we just build this up. At the very end, this last number here, this last list here should have all the combinations. So that's going to be our result. All right, so let's try to code that out. And what this allows us to do actually is uh, we don't actually need to sort our candidates at all. So let's first create our DP array. What we're going to do is have a list of lists for blank in range of the target plus one because we want to make sure we get the zero for that. Uh, okay, so now for we're going to try each candidate, each for C in candidates, and for each let's say target in range of. Uh, we only care about one here, so we'll say one to the target plus one. Uh, 
Yeah, so let's see. If I recall correctly, what we'll have to do is say if candidate, if our candidate here is less than the target, then we can just continue. Is that right? If our target candidate is, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's the opposite. If our candidate is greater than target, we can just continue. Otherwise, if candidate equals the target, well, then we're going to append to our DP array right here. And what we'll do is append to the T. And we'll append a list of candidate. Now, otherwise, we're going to go through our lists inside of the number that we could add to potentially in our DP array. So DP of T minus C. All these lists, what we'll do is append to DT. Whatever list we have here, plus the candidate. Now let's see if I did this right here and try to look at what the DP array looks like. Okay, so I messed up some syntax here. Blank in range of target plus one. Target's an integer. Oh. Okay. Forgot to make that equal sign. Now what's it look like? Hey, it looks like it's working. Right? So we just return this last index number of the DP array. So let's try that. Submit that and accepted. So I know this looks simple, but this is not that simple. But it's one that I would definitely say you need to know. As far as time complexity goes, it's O of n times the target number, I suppose. As long as, as well as these lists inside this for loop. So, hmm. I actually think it ends up being n squared times target. It might be n log n times target. Either way, it gets accepted. So that's the solution. It's way faster than using a recursive depth first search. And that's it. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.